guys, Darren here. Thanks for joining the Stock Option Market Weekly Update for the week of March 4th, 2024. We are going to talk about the economic calendar, what we had last week, what we've got coming out this week, and we will talk about the Fed and interest rates and when the next rate cut is expected. And we will jump into the FactSet Earnings Insight Report to show the Q4 earnings and what we've got left to uh, report moving ahead. And then we will talk about the different sectors last week's performance and what it looks like moving ahead and we'll even touch on the fear and greed index which is pretty high right now we are at uh you know near all-time highs right now so uh, after that we're going to jump into the live trades on the option trading platform guys before we get started if you appreciate the time and effort that goes into making these videos if you can do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe buttons down below it really helps out the channel and i appreciate it so thank you very much be sure and download the free options workshop in the link below. It talks about the two main benefits of trading options over buying stocks alone outright. We also have a paid course as well, link below. Use the link below and open an account with Moomoo. You can get 15 free stocks by depositing just $1,000 and earn 5.1% on your money and an extra 3% for three months, so 8.1%. You get the free charting software that is great and I use it every day. You can set it up with all your key indicators and you don't have to pay for it. Disclaimer, I'm not a financial planner and I'm not recommending trades. Please do your own research and if you're new or learning options, I recommend you start small. All right, <clears throat> where are we in the market? Uh, we started the week in the S&P 500, the SPX at 5,088 and we ended up at 5137 all the way over here this is the moo moo chart uh this is great you can set up all your indicators down below you could do rsi uh you could what i've got set up is i've got the bollinger bands in the white i've got the uh exponential moving averages i've got quite a few on here the 5 the 13 the 50 and the 200 but uh, you've got all the indicators real good charts that you can uh utilize and uh, you, this is the five day, five minute. You can go to the single day, one minute. If you're looking at getting in a trade and out quickly, uh, you can do one year to date. So uh, this is the, the Moomoo charting software that comes free when you use the link. So uh, you get 15 free stocks and then that uh, high interest rate. So we are up 7% year to date. We started the year at 47.43 and we were up slightly uh last week actually had a pretty good week we started out here uh ended up at 51.37 <coughs> and uh so we were around that 5088 um you can also look at the five day each day right here and you can see it trending up a little uh so the pe's right now are 20 so they're a little bit uh or they're they're above 20 so they are higher than the 17.7% average. But <clears throat> um, this is the economic calendar uh, for this week. Uh, we've got Thursday, the big one is PC, uh, uh, was PCE. Uh, that was last week. PCE came uh, 0.3 and 0.4 for January, just as expected. So um, that's down here last week. Here we go, PCE 0.3 and core PCE 0.4. And th these are the expectations right here. This is what it came in at. So it was right on target. Um, and uh, this week, it uh, doesn't look like <clears throat> uh, too much. We've got unemployment numbers coming out Friday. And that's the, the I guess, the biggest uh, news that we've got going on there. <clears throat> if we go to the Fed Watch <clears throat> tool, we are still expected to have the first rate cut in June, May, uh, still <clears throat> keeping at the five and a quarter to five and a half. Um, oh, that's March. Uh, but here's May, five and a quarter to five and a half. And it's not until June that the first rate cut is expected. So let's jump in to the facts that earnings uh, report. And if we look <clears throat> at that page one, We've got the uh, Q4 year-over-year uh, -year, uh, earnings growth rate of 4%, and uh, that's up slightly from 3.2%. Uh, 
<clears throat> and uh, here you can see the 12 month PE that we just talked about. It's 20.4 and the 10 year average is 17.7. Uh, if we move down around page 15, uh, let's see where we're at. The next, uh, looking for next year, right here. So Q, uh, Q1, 24, earnings growth of 3.6 and revenue <clears throat> growth of 3.6 uh, for Q1. And the, for the, in the entire calendar year, we're looking at 11% and 5%. So about uh, near where it's it's been. And, uh, you know, I'd like, I'd like to look, I don't think there's been any change here either, but in the, the PE ratios of the different sectors, we've still got energy that's a little bit undervalued. The forward PE is 11.9 versus the 10-year average of 15.5. Uh, utilities as well, 15.2 versus 17.6. And ah, consumer discretion is a little bit of, below the five-year, but uh, it's really energy and utilities, and then real estate is slightly lower, 17 and a half versus 19.4. And if we look at the different sectors over the last five days, <clears throat> you can see most was up, healthcare was down a little, uh, tech moved up, and consumer discretionary moved up uh, big as well. And just to let you know, you can click on that, and you can see what they've got under consumer uh, discretionary. Norwegian Cruise, AutoZone, CarMax, Lowe's, those are the type of accounts that are uh, in that uh, sector. And then the fear and greed index is way up at 77, so still extremely high. Uh, so we've got to be careful. You don't want to be uh, fully invested because there could be a uh, pretty big drop coming. So uh, let's jump into the trades on the platform. Uh, oil is the first one that we've got. And uh, it's moved up quite a bit last week. Uh, we saw energy moved up, but it's at 79. I, I trade this. Uh, I've got a put spread on. We've done well in oil. We're up. This is like max profit, so I need to close that out uh, start of the week. Adobe did well with tech doing well last week. We've got two put spreads on um, 5.20, 5.30 in March. And then I've got one in April at 5.15. Uh, 505 so $10 wide uh, put spreads in Adobe and we've got earnings actually if we move over here we can sort alphabetically <clears throat> pull this out a little and I've got it set up where I can see the earnings but you can see the high IVR of 83 huge in uh, Adobe right now you can click on the trade look at the curve mode <coughs> and we can see the profit uh, zone there all the way down to that 520 uh, range. But we're in the profit zone, max profit, uh, looking good in Adobe. And uh, my target for Adobe is way up in uh, around 680. So I'm going to stay long. Uh, any down day next week, I'll probably throw on another April. And uh, there's quite a bit of extrinsic in this March 15th, but that is because of uh, March 14th before the bell uh, earnings. So uh, actually, I probably won't add any more <clears throat> until we get that earnings report because I've got two tranches on right now. But if it's negative, if it drops any more, I'll throw, I'll close out uh, March 15th and I'll add two more in April, likely. Um, if we're profitable, we're gonna we've got $432 in extrinsic that we stand to make um, as soon as earnings, you know, are reported. We should make most of that. AMD is the other one. It moved up big last week. Um, it's done well for us, you know, just in the last 30 days, made $1,548 trading, uh, AMD, but I'm long. My target for AMD <clears throat> is 195. So it's a little bit higher than where it's at right now. I actually rolled up, uh, just last week and collected another $130 right here. Um, I rolled from. The 155, 165s, the 170, 180, and we still have a, a, we're still quite a bit of room there to make profit. Um, so we're in co good position with AMD. Um, you know, those AI stocks are just going crazy. Chewy is another one um, that I've got actually a straddle on in uh, Chewy. It's a low-priced stock, so um, 
22 and a half and you can see the profit range we're in the profit range right now even at 18 there's a huge uh, profit range there in uh, Chewy and uh, you know, we made 120 bucks in the last 30 days just uh, you know adding the call spread and uh, uh, staying long Chewy they've got earnings March 20 coming up it's been down uh, you can see here uh, for some time but I love the sector I mean people love their pets and it's online and uh, um, I like Chewy DraftKings has done really well for us uh, as well. Um, we've had this one on. We know uh, we've been doing pretty well. Uh, 663 over the last year. But, uh, oh, you know, I, I did close out a position uh, last week. But we've made a lot, a lot more than that 663. It doesn't seem right. But uh, DraftKings, I'm long with uh, two leaps. And then a call, uh, two calls against that. So poor man's covered calls. And you can see that <clears throat> profit zone and how it goes up. And then those calls kind of uh, top it out there. But uh, I like trading the leaps options in DraftKings and just uh, collecting on the calls and then uh, making money on the leaps as well. I've got GDX uh, gold miners on as a trade next week to, uh, I'm looking at buying a, uh, a leaps. Uh, 320 days <coughs> out it's selling for $525 right now versus if you buy the 100 shares outright it's $2,733 but if you look at the chart it's way down um, and we could even look at the the Moomoo chart as well Let's uh, put in GDX gold miners, and we can look at the yearly, and you can see, yeah, it's way, way down. So uh, I like gold miners, and I'm going to do a leaps option in uh, gold, and then I'm going to sell. What's nice is selling the short term calls against it so we can go into april right now after i have that leaps option on which i'll put on monday and then we could sell uh 28 and collect 104 dollars so uh we can make money whichever way the the, the stock goes but I, I i like gold miners going forward and long uh google and that's gonna be a new one i haven't traded that in a while google uh we've got three uh put spreads on around the one We've got a 135, 140, 145, and we're at 137. It had a big <clears throat> drop last week. Um, I'm not sure. I believe they missed on uh, their ad revenue. Yep, they missed on their ad revenue. Um, but I have a 180 to $200 target. I mean, Google's dominant search engine. They've been trading in this tr uh, channel. And they're at the bottom of the channel, bottom of the Bollinger Band. And uh, <clears throat> this should be one of my largest positions. But uh, there's $311 <coughs> left in extrinsic to collect in Google. But I like Google uh, moving forward. Um, IWM did well last week. We've only got 56 bucks left to collect in this March. But hey, in 12 days, I'll take the 56 bucks. Um, any down day next week, it, it was up all week, but any down day I'll uh, uh, throw on more uh, of the Russell ETF in April. Uh, L3 had a bit of a drop last week as well. Um, I've got to look into that, but it's been trading around that 29, 210, and I've got the 210 put spreads. I've got one in March and two in April. And it's been uh, doing well for us, but you can see the profit zone there. Um, and we've made in the last six months 858 bucks in uh, L3, but I'm going to stay long. They're the dominant uh, uh, supplier to the military, all kinds of electronic warfare systems and different systems for ground, air, and sea. Uh, Lulu, I'm long 450. 
Uh, it's at 458 and 73 IVR. So, yep, it's got earnings coming up. That's why the IVR is high. But uh, Lulu, uh, I've got a target of around 490, so a little bit higher than where it's at uh, right now. You can see the uh, ascending triangle uh, pattern, but uh, I'm long Lulu, and uh, they've got that earnings on March 26th. Mara is a new one. I've got a video that I'm putting together right now on this, and it's a crypto uh, play, but they're a, a gold, uh, crypto miner, and I think they're really poised to uh, take off, and you can see the volatility, but there's going to be a halving of uh, Bitcoin, and typically when there's a halving uh, right before the stock shoots up and right after it shoots up, and they just had earnings and missed slightly on one number, although growing like crazy. So keep your eyes out for that video that's uh, coming out here uh, in the next day or two. Um, Meta is uh, killing me. Keeps moving up. I don't know why I like to short Meta, but <clears throat> it's uh, way up at 502. At some point, tech's going to drop and uh, it's going to come down, but <clears throat> just has not happened yet so um not sure what i'm going to do in meta but uh like i said it's killing me i'll probably just keep rolling out <clears throat> it is long i've got to have some shorts on um at some point it will pull back so uh we'll see what happens uh, i've got 47 days to expiration so not too worried about it yet but um at some point i want to roll out from april to may or close the position if I just give up on it. But uh, I, again, I think at some point it's going to come back. Uh, Netflix um, is doing well for us. Uh, you know, we've got Iron Condors 580 to 620. I just moved up last week my my puts because uh, they were uh, still way out of the money. So I collected $184. Moving those five seven uh, five twenty five thirties up to five seventy five eighty, and it still puts us in the middle of that. Well, we're at the top, but we've still got a lot of room to move down there in Netflix. But Netflix has been a good uh, trade for us um, over the last year. Yeah, we've made over three thousand dollars just trading iron condors in Netflix. Um, my target for Netflix is 600, and uh, where is it at? It's at 620, so we're, we're in that range, but a little bit high, um, and you can see it's at the upper end of that Bollinger Band and upper end of the channel that we've got drawn for it. Um, the Qs, I've got to have some negative <clears throat> trades on, so I did uh, a put spread in the, the Qs, and we're a little bit under, but that's kind of a hedge against the rest of uh, the portfolio. And uh, and then SoFi is the next one that we've got. I'm long leaps in SoFi. They had a bit of a drop last week, but I did close out my one-year leaps and moved out to two-year. So on an up day, I closed out one year. The difference in the price between the one years and two years is very small. I mean, it's 20, 30 bucks, I think. So I've got the deep in the money calls. I've got eight of them. Uh, in January, so basically two years out, and I'm going to be long so far going forward. It's in that nine range, and uh, I should be doing better. At some point, it's going to move up, but you know, almost a thousand bucks that we've made in so far. And the uh, SQQs, this is protection against a big drop when the Qs technology drops. This goes up, so it's kind of a um, uh, it's the same play as the Qs and being short right here. So they're both short and you can see the negative delta, negative 13. This is negative uh, beta widow delta as well. Uh, TLT and TMF are both bond positions. So uh, I've talked about this in the past, but uh, roughly uh, three months, 90 days before the Fed cuts rates and we just talked about it being in June, these are good stocks to be in, and they typically go up. Uh, bond values go up as interest rates come down on those bonds. So um, you can see the chart uh, there. And they are at lows, way over here at lows. So that's why I've got those positions. And uh, I've got deep in the money calls. 
Yeah, I like to do that to use less buying power than buying the stock outright. If I were to buy this uh, stock, it's you know fifty-five hundred dollars for a uh, hundred shares, but pay less than half in that of that when you uh, buy the leaps and you control the same amount of uh, shares of stock. Tesla is another one, 180, 170 put spread. Um, we're at 200, so it has uh, moved up. And uh, I like Tesla going forward at these prices, especially. Um, it's been down a lot, hurt a lot, but they're the dominant EV player. So it will come back. Uh, Verizon, uh, good. Uh, uh, I actually own <clears throat> those shares because of the dividend. It pays like a 7% dividend. So any downtick, I'll pick up another 100 shares of uh, Verizon. I, on a big up day, I did sell 100. Wells Fargo is one of my favorite banks. Um, I've got the 55 call um, that I'm collecting on and then a leaps option against it. I think my target is right around where it's at, 55. And then uh, the last one, we've got uh, oil, XOM, and I did close that one out uh, last week. Uh, and uh, it's because oil was up, so uh, we did pretty well. Just in the last 30 days, we've made 461 bucks in uh, oil. But any down move, when it moves down to that 100 range, I like to get long. So I'll throw on some more uh, put spreads in April. Earnings next week. Uh, we don't have uh, too much. We can click over here, all earnings, and sort here. But these are all the earnings that are coming out. We've got Nordstrom's, Ross, Target. So some of the retail stores. Campbell Soup, um, Costco coming out next week, DocuSign, Technology, Marvel uh, um, going forward. So keep your eyes out on that um, going forward. All right, guys, I put a link down below for the free options workshop. Remember to grab that. Remember to grab your 15 free stocks from Moomoo using the link below and earn 8.1% on your cash. And remember to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps out the channel. We want to get the video out to as many people as possible. Let me know what you're trading. Leave a comment. Have a great week trading. See you in the next one.